Friends, I welcome you to my channel before listening to this story. I will ask you to like and subscribe. It is not difficult for you, but it is pleasant for me. And we're starting. Everything started to fall apart when my 15-year-old daughter Shelly received one of these DNA kits for Christmas. I don't even remember who gave it to her. She was very excited when she carefully filled out all the application requirements and sent it by mail. Six weeks later, the results finally came back, and she was unhappy. Donna and I were sitting quietly in the living room reading when our daughter decided to voice her displeasure. We couldn't make out the words, but things weren't going well. About 15 minutes later, she ran out of her room and announced that she was going to her friends. Donna reminded her to be home for dinner when she ran out the door. I was sitting with a satisfied smile on my face and noticed that Donna seemed a little more worried. We both just shrugged and continued reading. Donna and I got married 18 years ago, right after I finished my residency. Five years later, I was considered the leading gallbladder surgeon in Tri-County. I had so much work that I could handle, and life was good. And then everything went to hell. We were at a social event sponsored by Donna's company, Gilbert Enterprises, when I had some kind of seizure, as a result of which I developed neurological tics similar to Parkinsonism. It wasn't Parkinson's disease, but something similar. I had a constant tick in my right eye, and my right arm twitched from time to time at inappropriate moments. They never found out exactly what it was, and for some reason I was so glad I was still functional that I didn't pursue it any further. However, my days as a surgeon are over, so I found a new position as a radiologist. Nine months later, Shelley was born. Everything seemed to be going as well as could be expected. I wasn't happy with my new ailment, but I was still fully functional in most areas. I was doing very well in my new medical position, and the pay was still quite adequate. Donna seemed to be a little more accommodating. She turned into a kind of Stepford wife. I thought she was feeling a little guilty because I had a seizure when we were at one of her company's events. Anyway, I liked her increased attention, so I didn't complain. I really loved this woman. We have lived like this for 15 years. Donna, do you have any idea why Shelley was so upset about the ancestral story? I have no idea. I really think it would be better if we just leave it as it is. I'm sure she'll get over it in a few days, whatever it is. There's something about the way she said it that I didn't like. I got the feeling that she was trying to distract me from this without looking obvious. I just smiled and nodded my head. I didn't read much for the rest of the evening, but I thought a hell of a lot. I tried to connect Shelley's attitude to anything else that might be going on, but nothing came up. Apart from the usual quarrels that happen in all families, we were in good shape. No financial difficulties, no problems in the bedroom, and definitely nothing that could have anything to do with our daughter. I needed to look at the DNA report. Donna went to work and Shelley went to school. I stayed at home. I found what I was looking for in her desk drawer. Donna's family is mostly Irish, and mine is mostly Scottish with a touch of German. It turned out that Shelley was 48% Eastern European. I had to laugh a little at the poor quality of the report. Reading on, I noticed that there was a list of close matches. Of course, Donna's name was at the very beginning, but my name was nowhere on the list. There were also several names of relatives on Donna's side, but none of mine. I assumed that the only people who would show up on the list were people who actually had their DNA documented. Donna, Shelley, and I did this five years ago as part of our annual medical checkup. Mine should have been there if Donna had it. I started to worry, and then I noticed a strange name at the top of the list. Teresa Haugen matched by 46%. Who the hell was Teresa Haugen? Dr. McCall, this is John Terrell. Yes, John. I'm glad to hear from you. Everything is fine? Yes, no problem at all. I still have that damn twitch and eye tick, but otherwise I'm fine. However, I have a small question. A few years ago, you took DNA samples from all of us for our medical records. Could you check something for me? What do you need? I'm trying to figure out if there are any glitches in the DNA results between Shelley and me. Failures? What do you mean by failures? Listen, Doc, it's confusing, but I'm trying to figure out if Shelley is my biological daughter or not. I don't want to cause any problems, but I just need to know. Oh, damn it. I'm sorry about my French, John. You know that you have access to all these files. You could check it out for yourself. I know, but I'd rather you did it. Let me go through the files and I'll call you back. Okay, give me an hour. Thanks, Doc. I really appreciate it. I think Donna could tell that I was worried. Dr. McCall has confirmed that I am not Shelley's father. I didn't tell Donna. For the last three days, I've been trying to figure out what I want to do. 
I was surprisingly calm about the whole situation and was able to think about it without losing my composure. It took me a few days to find Teresa Haugen. For some reason, I assumed that she must be about the same age as Shelley. Finally, I found her on the internet in the family of Malcolm Haugen. Malcolm was my age and lived in Westchester. I assumed she was his daughter. Malcolm agreed to meet me Saturday morning at Dennis's in Exton. I'm not sure if he knew who I was, but I could hear some anxiety in his voice. He came early. I came on time. We exchanged formalities. Malcolm, I don't remember meeting you before. Have you ever lived in Reading? This caused a slight grimace on his face. He shifted a little in his chair as if trying to get comfortable. I worked at Gilbert Enterprises about 15 years ago or so. I think we met at one of the company's events back then. I left Reading right after that. He seemed relieved to have said that, but still felt a little uncomfortable. I take it you knew my wife Donna. It was a question formulated as a comment. He didn't answer, he just nodded. Do you know why I'm here? Not really, but I have some suggestions. The few moments of silence were tense. Why have you been silent for so long? I just found out. Silence again. He took a deep breath. I was young. I was drinking too much and I was caught up in the moment. I know it's not an excuse and I know it was wrong. I think that more than anything I succumbed to peer pressure. Donna, your wife, was one of the most charming women I've ever met. I knew she was married, but no one seemed to care at that moment. Who else was there? He was still fidgeting a little. Oh, the three of us were from the engineering department. Freddie Springer, Clayton Mankey, and me. Donna was very friendly with all of us, and we had a great time. There were a lot of hints around, and some of them were getting serious. Has anyone even thought of me? Donna was constantly looking around to make sure that you weren't with us. If I remember correctly, you were hanging out with some of the older guys talking about golf. How did it all go off the rails? Freddie tried to persuade Donna to drink some strong drinks. She kept saying no. He was quite persistent. That's when it all went down the drain. What does this mean? We were all drunk, including Donna. After another long pause, I looked at him. Say it again. What happened next? Freddie brought you a drink a few minutes later. You fell asleep on one of the deck chairs and we all went upstairs. It was only when we came down an hour later that we found out what had happened to you. What do you mean? It looks like you had a bad reaction to the medicine that Freddie gave you, and they had to take you to the hospital urgently. Donna didn't even know about it until you were gone. I didn't say anything. First thing Monday morning, I quit my job and returned home to West Chester. I found a new job, got married, and now I have three children. I never returned to Reading again. I never saw Donna again. I've always regretted what happened, and I'm really saddened. I do not know what else I can say or do. I asked the waitress to bring us a full pot of coffee. Malcolm, have you ever taken one of these bloodline tests? No, but my daughter Teresa did it a few years ago. Is there anyone else in the family? No, just her. She got it as a gift. Why are you asking? Your daughter Teresa and my daughter Shelley are stepsisters. I watched as Malcolm sat motionless, not breathing. Finally, he blinked and took a deep breath. Damn it. I watched him for a few moments until tears came to his eyes. His head was slowly swaying from side to side. Are you okay? No, it's not like that. The worst night of my life got even worse. I can't believe this is happening. It will destroy me and my family. I've tried so hard to make sure nothing like this happens again, and then it comes back and bites my ass. How much worse can it be? We sat in silence for a few minutes. Malcolm, what happened to the other two guys? Freddy died in an accident on the Schuylkill Expressway. Clayton is an alcoholic and lives in the rectory in Fishtown. I haven't seen him in years. Malcolm, I want to thank you for your time and your honesty. I'm not looking for anything else, and I don't have the slightest desire to take revenge or desire retribution. You can relax. I will not harass you or expose you. It's nice to hear that, but there's another problem here. What about your daughter, or should I say my daughter? What if she figures it out and wants to contact me? What should I do? I don't want to offend or embarrass anyone. Do you have any suggestions? I will help you in any way I can. I won't initiate anything, but if it comes up, I'll be on your side no matter what happens. I'm not a vindictive person. I'm not happy with what happened, but I'm not going to ruin my life by dwelling on it. Just in case, you might want to prepare your wife so that you don't get caught off guard. My daily life has become unbearable. 
Every time my hand twitched or my eye blinked, I was reminded of my wife's betrayal. Every time she was overly sweet or accommodating, I cringed. Like Malcolm, she carried a sense of guilt for 15 years. All these 15 years, I loved her because I perceived her as a devoted wife. Now I know it wasn't loyalty, but guilt. I felt like I could forgive Malcolm, but not Donna. My love for my wife was fading, little by little, every day. It was starting to eat me up inside. I had to do something before it was too late. Hello, my name is Lena, Lena Durante. Welcome to Santa Marta Hospital. You must be John Terrell. I stayed at the port for a week, but this was my first visit to the hospital canteen. I made a clumsy attempt to stand up and extended my hand to greet my unexpected guest. It made her giggle a little. May I join you? I just nodded when she sat down. I wouldn't call her pretty, but she was damn attractive for a middle-aged woman. So are you the new doctor? I am glad to see you as part of the team. Have you settled in? She was obviously local, but she spoke perfect English like most of the staff. Yes, everything is going well. I rented a furnished apartment within walking distance of the hospital. All I have to do now is find some good places to eat nearby. Oh good, I can help you with that. I'm an expert at finding places to eat. She did a great job breaking the ice. What department do you work in? I'm a neurosurgeon. I am sure that we will work together regularly. I understand that you have a lot of experience. In almost all directions. I will read all the x-rays, Connecticut scans, magnetic resonance imaging, mammograms and ultrasounds, and sometimes tea leaves. That made me chuckle a little. Have you always done this? No. I'm sure you've noticed I have an eye tick and a twitch in my right arm. Before my illness, I had laparoscopic surgery on my gallbladder. The transition to radiology allowed me to continue my work. I feel like I can still contribute. What exactly was the disease? You know, I haven't really found out. There has been a lot of discussion and speculation, but never anything definite. I felt like everyone was being evasive. I tried to fix it several times and got disappointed, so I just quit. Stop talking. I have to get back to work. I finish at six. I'll pick you up here and we'll get to know your first dinner. You work around the clock, right? I smiled and nodded. Lena Durante was unmarried. I did not ask why and did not delve into the topic. After a month, I felt comfortable enough with her to explain my marital status. The fact that I was still married didn't seem to bother her. Two weeks later, she started staying overnight in my apartment. Life was good. I didn't communicate with my wife or my daughter. My relationship with Donna got colder and colder before I left, even though she kept trying to keep it going. The problem was with me. She tried to get me to explain what was wrong, but I couldn't. Shelly became completely withdrawn. I tried to keep this relationship going, but she ruined it. It got to the point where we barely talked. She never explained what her dissatisfaction with me was. I didn't ask, but I think it was pretty obvious that it had to do with that damn DNA test. I didn't tell Donna that I was leaving. I just left her a power of attorney to sell the house and took half of our savings. She had a good job, and she would have no problem supporting herself and Shelley. I'm sure she would have sold the house eventually. I also left my wedding ring. Let her figure it out for herself. Donna never tried to find me or contact me. If she knew where I was, I wasn't aware of it. John, I've set aside time to meet you on Friday at 9 in the morning at my clinic. This is a common thing, so don't worry too much about it. Lena tried to sound casual. It doesn't make sense, and you know it. What's happening? It's the eye tick, John. I just want to check it out a little bit. Don't you think I should see an ophthalmologist? Dr. Perez will be there. He's the best we have. We're not going to do anything. Just take a look around. Lena, I don't trust you. I know shit by the smell. Just shut up, John. Be there at nine. Well, Dr. Perez wasn't there. However, there was an anesthesiologist there, and before I knew it, I was fast asleep. Lena was sitting by my bed when I came to my senses. She was smiling at my obvious displeasure. Are you mad at me, John? I didn't really want to talk, so I just muttered to her. It didn't take me long to figure it out. I no longer had an eye tick or a twitch in my arm. I raised my right hand and stared at it in amazement. She was as hard as a rock. My hand immediately went up to my head, and Lena started laughing when I tried to find the bandages. They weren't there. It's a laparoscopy, John. You, of all people, should have understood that. I gave her an idiotic look as if asking her a question. Cheer up, you idiot. And she laughed again. Over the next few months, I worked in the surgical department to get recertified. I decided to stay in the radiology department and just replace if any gallbladder surgery is required. 
Everyone was happy with the new agreement. Lena and I moved in together and for the next two years everything went very well. I think she would like to get married but given the circumstances she didn't want to insist on it. It was a warm summer day and I was sitting on the porch with a bottle of Lancer's Rose. John, you have a guest. Lena was silent for a moment. I'm going down to the market for a while. She didn't wait for an answer. Hi, John. It's been a long time. It's been almost four years since I last saw my wife. She still looked good, but there were slightly tired circles around her eyes. Donna, you look good. Can I get you something to drink? Wine would be great. She sat down while I took the glass. We were silent for a few moments. We chatted about the house, the weather, and her flight. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. Donna, why are you here? What do you want? I just wanted to calm down a little. I want to take stock so that we can move on. I need answers to a few questions, and I feel like you need them too. You refused to talk before. I think I understand why. I just need 30 minutes or so. You flew for 15 hours to talk for 30 minutes? I'll have to do it face to face. Good. Go on. After a year, I realized that you weren't coming back. I sold the house and rented a small apartment for myself and Shelly. It's a check for half the house. She put it on the table between us. I filed for divorce, refusing the money. It took a year, but the job is done and everything is clean. Now you are free to do as you please. She put a second document on the table. Shelly is engaged in getting married in a couple of months and asked me to give you this invitation. She was hoping you could give her away. She'll totally understand if you decide not to do it. She understands that her behavior has been inappropriate in the last few months and apologizes for it. The invitation was joined to other documents. I wanted to thank you for the checks you sent to Shelley's college account every month. It really made a big difference. Under the circumstances, I did not expect this. It took me by surprise. I've never sent any checks. However, I had an idea where they came from. Of course, I was hoping to find out exactly why you left, but I'll understand if you refuse to tell me. If you still decide not to say anything, can I at least answer some questions for you? She paused and took a sip of wine. I decided it was my turn to speak. Donna, I didn't want half the money for the house, but if it makes you feel better, I'll gladly accept it. I didn't bother filing for divorce because I had no intention of getting married again. However, things have changed now, so divorce is welcome. I understand. She is very beautiful. I don't think it would be appropriate for me to marry Shelley off at her wedding. I think the honor should go to her father. When I finished this sentence, Donna dropped her glass of wine on the tiled patio floor. There was a sigh as her mouth opened slightly. It took me a few minutes to raise my glass, and she pulled herself together. She seemed to have difficulty choosing her words. John, I don't want to be sneaky or anything like that, and I'm also not trying to be evasive or defensive, but who are you suggesting I contact? What about one of the three guys you made love to the night I had the attack? Fortunately, she didn't have a glass in her hand this time. After about 30 seconds of incoherent mumbling mixed with sobs, she finally blurted out, I think I made a mistake by coming here. I was hoping for closure, but not like this. I think I should leave. She started to get up, but I insisted on sitting her back down. No, you won't do that. You've opened this can of worms, now finish what you started. You felt that by coming here with open arms, you were on the right path. It was done to make me feel like shit for leaving my wife and daughter. I'm sorry, but this dog doesn't hunt. Why don't you tell me all about it, including why you hid the medical report? Just at that moment, Lena returned and noticed what was happening. Oh shit, John, what the hell did you do? Nothing. We were just talking about old times and she fell apart. Lena took Donna inside and put her on the couch. She made a wet compress and gave her some pills. I stayed away. I was a bad guy. How the hell did this happen? I went to the kitchen and got a superside. The wine didn't spoil the taste. John, why don't I talk to her? Maybe she won't be so upset. You must be pretty drunk. Is there anything specific you want me to ask her about? Yes. A couple of questions. I already know the answers to some of them, but I'd like to see if she confirms them. I just don't know the others. Ask her the names of the three guys she made love to. Has she seen them again? See if you can find out if she had other boyfriends and at what other times. Just curious. Ask her why she hid the medical report about my seizure. Ask her why we didn't have any more children. Stop. There is too much information. It's a bit overwhelming. I'll do my best. Why don't you go out on the patio and relax? Take a couple more bottles of beer. I fell asleep, and two hours later, Lena was shaking me to wake me up. 
I gave her a sedative. She will spend the rest of the night in the guest bedroom. Did anything productive come out of it? Once I got her to start, I couldn't stop her. The only thing she remembers about the three guys is that one of them was named Freddy. It looks like it was a one-time occurrence. I do not know why she did it. I haven't been able to get any hints of any other infidelities. She never saw or heard from these guys again. She suspected that one of them was Shelly's father, but never found out again. She was scared when Shelly got a DNA test kit for Christmas, but she didn't know how to handle it. She assumed that you understood that, and that's why you left. Wow, a good resume. That explains a lot. She also asked why you don't have an eye tick or twitch anymore. I explained to her that it was easy to fix and should have been done many years ago, but the diagnosis was hidden for some reason. This caused another fit of sobbing, so I just left her alone. She should sleep until morning. It's hard to believe, but I once loved this woman. I always thought that such love lives forever, but it's not true. I've been fighting for 15 years for something I shouldn't have. All the attention and love she shared with me over the years was just a way to hide her betrayal. It wasn't love. John, there's bitterness in your voice. Lena, I have to leave for a few days. When Donna wakes up in the morning, can you make sure she gets to the airport? Tell her I'm not coming to Shelly's wedding. Also tell her that the checks she received were from Shelly's father, not from me. Where are you going? What is it? She asked. I don't know. It's only for a week or so. You'll be here when I get back, right? Of course I will. Promise me you won't drink too much. Call me. That's how this part of my life ended. I never saw or heard from Donna or Shelly again. Lena and I didn't get married, but we bought a nice little villa together near Porto. I decided to take up oil painting after watching several videos by Michael James Smith. I'm actually pretty good at it. The villa really had a nice little studio. Lena gave me a DNA test kit for Christmas. It's not funny.